speak Aramee? Yeah. <coughs> All right, let's start. Uh, so my name is uh, Jan Honza Arbaikovo, aka Honza, that's my uh, nickname. And I'm here to talk a little bit about DevTools, about the work I'm doing for Mozilla. So let's start. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, as I said, Honza, uh, I joined Mozilla in 2007. At that time, I started working with Firebug. It was the first development tool uh, for the internet, like in the browser development tool. Anyone knows Firebug? Yeah, use, yeah many hands. Um, yeah, that was the first tool I've been working on for many, many years. And now I'm trying to use the whole experience I've got uh, during these years and you know all the feedback I've collected from users. And I'm trying to make DevTools uh, the best tool on the market. So let's talk about DevTools. Uh, so next 30 minutes, maybe not so long, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, depends how, uh, uh, how boring that talk is. But I would uh, like to talk mostly about what we did in DevTools in the past month, uh, what kind of new features we have introduced, and what is the DevTools future, what uh, the future will be. So you can see there is some kind of an evolution. Everything started with Firebug and now we are going ahead. Uh, and we'll see what the future brings. Um, so first, DevTools, we care about the user interface and we care about user experience. And we think, we believe that uh, developer tools, even if the UI or the tasks which should be done using DevTools are complex, we believe that the UI needs to be simple. So even non-tech users can use it. DevTools are not only for professional software engineers, they are even for people who care about the web and who want to contribute to the web. So we care about the user interface and want to do it as simple as possible. So we did <coughs> change a few things, a few internal things. We started to use uh, web technologies to build DevTools. We, we decided that we want to use the same technologies as web developers, as those who are actually using these tools. We want to use the same technologies for building these tools. And this will, this will make it better for those users to contribute to our project. So we decided to use React and Redux as our core technology to build, build user interface. Anyone knows React? Who knows React? No? One hand, two, three, yeah, quite a few people, good, good. That we picked it because we believe that React is great. Uh, great library for building not even simple user interfaces, but also complex UIs. Those UIs which are required, or which should be used to build complex things. So that's why React, and that's why Redux. And that's not enough, it's not enough to use just simple technologies or these web standard technologies. It's, um, it's also very important to simplify the development process itself. Um, so yeah, we want to have simple code base, we want to have source code which is understandable and which is easy to contribute to. You know, uh, any programmer would probably agree with me that it's easy to write code, but then it's hard to understand what somebody else wrote. So that's why we care about simple code base. But that, as I said, that's not enough. You won't also want to simplify the whole development process, the way how the source code is actually written. So we decided to develop our tools in the same way as web applications on the web are developed. So no specific things like building Firefox, you know, downloading source code, whole Firefox code base, then using some specific Firefox uh, command line commands. We decided to use the same technologies which are well known for the web community. This way will be easy for web developers to, to use our project, to contribute to our project and, and help us. That's important. So that's why we are using things like React Hotloader. It's a lot easier to use React Hotloader for building applications. I'll, I'll get back to it. Um, we built tools which are supporting all these ideas, like Launchpad. The Launchpad is something which is helping us to run our, to our tools inside a browser tab, just like any other page. Uh, and also, the point which I just mentioned is we want to be possible uh, to run our tools inside a browser tab just like any other page. And we'll, we will see why that's interesting. So let me show a quick demo. Hopefully it will work. Um, so we have a simple test page here. Uh, so if you want to open DevTools, there is a tools with developer toggle tools. And these are built in developer tools in Firefox. Uh, <coughs> I don't know who, well, anybody already use these tools? Anybody has any experience with those tools, building Firefox tools? Yeah, I'm saying, and I'll get, yeah. So these are panels, I'm sorry. <coughs> these are panels 
these are these individual tools we have in our user interface, in our product. So for example, let me show some of them, like the console panel. That's a place where you can see all different messages coming from the current page. We also have a, an inspector. That inspector is showing markup, the thing which is building the page. You can inspect the page by using that arrow, and you see, suddenly you can see every element which is, uh, which is used on the page. That's what the inspector does helps you to inspect the page itself. And the panel I want to focus on today is called Network Monitor. This one, this is a panel. That's a panel or tool which is used to monitor the HTTP activity, the activity which is executed by the page. So you probably know the page is loaded from somewhere, from a server which is somewhere on the internet. And the page itself can execute a few requests, usually many requests. And all these requests are in, uh, rendered inside that content, inside this panel. So currently you can see two of them. You can see the URL from where that resource is coming from. You can see some other information. And on the far right side you can see uh, some kind of a timing which shows how long it to, to, took to download that resource. And if you are a developer, a web developer and you care about page load performance, you want your pages to be loaded fast and quickly, you might be interested in that timing. You know, might be interested in why the page is slow, and you might be interested in how to make it faster. So network monitor is exactly that tool which can help you with that task. And now you can see that network monitor being inside this special UI. This is the tool, we call it toolbox. Um, that's something which is built in Firefox. Currently, if you want to change the toolbox, if you want to append new features, new buttons, new filters like here, for example, you need to download the whole Firefox code base, you need to build Firefox, you need to, you need to you know, uh, do all these hard things uh, to contribute. We decided to simplify that, and we decided to do a trick and make sure that this, the same thing, is possible to load inside a page, just like any other, inside a browser, just like any other page. So let me show you how. Um, so I have already set up everything on my machine, so all I need to do, uh, I have running uh, this, this uh, this thing is showing that I'm running a, a development server. That server is running or providing some, some information on this local URL, local 8000. So what I have to do is load that page. So let me copy that URL to the clipboard. Um, now what I need to say that one important thing is that I can load that tool inside any browser. So in my case I'll use, I'll use Chrome. I'll paste that URL here. Or I can bring it down. Okay, so now that page is connected to my running Firefox. The Firefox is running here. That's my Firefox. It has two tabs, Google and test page. And I want to debug one of those. Let's say I want to debug the test page, right? So I'm going to back to Chrome. This page, that's what we call Launchpad. It allows me to connect back to my Firefox instance and debug those pages. I see both of them. There's the Google one and there's the test page. I want to debug the test page, so I can select it. All right. And now I'm seeing a tool. That's the tool. It's different colors. doesn't matter. It's different theme. But that's the tool. That's the network monitor tool. I can just reload the page remotely and see those two requests. See, that's the same two requests I, uh, we have seen before. So I'm able to run the tool inside a page just like any other, sorry, inside a browser tab just like any other page. And now it allows me to debug that page using, using, using tools. Uh, so in this case, because I use Chrome, I can use uh, developer tools in Chrome. So let's show them. These are developer tools in Chrome and I can use them to build our tools. Right, that's maybe a little tricky, but that's, that's very, very powerful. Now it's very, very easy to build our tools for anyone who is a web developer. Doesn't have to know specific Firefox technologies, nothing, just standard web APIs, standard web technologies, and build our tools, contribute to our project. So that's the point of that slide. Um, I'll go back to my slides, I found them somewhere. <coughs> Here, let me restart those things. So simplify the development process, I'm back on at my slide. That's our goal. Anyone should be able to contribute to our tools as simply as possible.
So let's move to the next slide. Go faster. So that's another uh, initiative we have, another, another idea we have. Uh, right now, the tools I'm talking about all the time, these are built in Firefox. And Firefox itself is, um, is using a specific release schedule. It takes, it takes months for Firefox to ship new features. And there are reasons for it. We want to, in Mozilla, we care about stability and high quality products. So it's important to give it a time. If you implement a new feature, we need to give it a time, make sure that it really works, and, and make testers some time to, or give testers some time to, to test all those new features. So there are reasons for Firefox to, to have this long release schedule, like three months from building a feature to shipping that feature to users. Um, but in DevTools, you want to ship a lot, a lot faster. Like the market is hard, there are competitors on the market, and you want to ship not in months, you want to ship in days. So we want to make a feature today and ship tomorrow. And not only new features, we want to fix bugs so quickly. If we, we got a bug report, some regression, some important security issue, we want to fix them in days, not wait for months, of course. So that's why we want to ship DevTools as an add-on. That's an important thing or step for us. Anyone uh, build any add-ons for Firefox? Or are you using any add-ons for Firefox? Anyone? See some hands? Yes. So, so that's exactly the same technology. We want to make sure that it's possible to, uh, to ship those DevTools as add-ons. In that case, we, have, we can have it, uh, our own release schedule, and you can ship any, any time you want in days if you want. Uh, so yeah, so that's the important step. Let's move forward. So these tools we are working on, they are not just standalone products. We want to integrate them with other products on the market, and there are many of them. So for example, I, I, the demo I showed before, I was showing how to connect from our tool, from the network monitor, how to connect to Firefox backend, how to connect to Firefox page, how to connect to Firefox product. But we want to support, because we are using standard web APIs, we are using JavaScript, and JavaScript, these days JavaScript runs almost anywhere. We want to connect to any environment which is running JavaScript. So why not connect to Chrome as well? You know, today's web developers, they are building web pages and they are testing across all browsers on, on today's market. So why not to offer them one tool which, is, which can be used anywhere, you know, in any browser? So we want to connect to Chrome browser, we want to connect to Firefox, we want to connect to Node, and we want to connect to existing IDs. If you write a code, you are definitely using, you know, I believe you are using some kind of an ID, and it's very, it would be very simple, much easier to create breakpoints directly from your ID, directly from your source editor, instead of going somewhere and looking for the right source code line and then create a breakpoint. You can create that breakpoint immediately as you write that line, immediately execute and immediately see if there is any problem with that. So that's why we want to connect with any existing products on the market. But of course, we want to utilize existing communities. All these products, like Node.js or Sublime, many of them, maybe not all of them, but many of those products are open source. And we are living there. We are living in the open source world, of course. So why not to integrate with all uh, uh, the other uh, open source projects? Um, source repository, so of course. DevTools consists from many, many uh, lines of source code. I, could, um, I cannot estimate how much it is, but it's very important to pick the right source repository, the place where we store all that code. And currently we are using something which is called MC. That's what you see on the screen. That's uh, Mozilla Central. That's a place where the whole Mozilla code exists, even code for Firefox. And that's a complex place. That's a huge amount of code. It's uh, like millions and millions lines of code which are written to build Firefox itself. Um, like DevTools product is not that big. We don't need such a huge repository. We don't have to live in such a huge environment when it's easy to be lost for anyone who wants to contribute to that project. So we, we decided to leave from MC and use GitHub. Uh, because GitHub is a well-known project. All the cool guys are on GitHub. Everyone today is using GitHub. That's a place where it lives. So we want to be there too. And the main reason why we want to do it is because it's very simple using all these GitHub processes to contribute to any project. So even to DevTools. 
it's very simple to, to send PR, to send a patch and say, hey, you have a bug in your code, here is a patch, patch it, you know, fix it, this is what you need. Or implement new feature, it's very simple on GitHub to send a patch saying, hey, now you can have this button and it makes things a lot more easier. So that's why we want to be there. Um, web extensions. Um, I, made, I mentioned extensions already, that we want DevTools to be an extension. But we also want to support other extensions. Uh, that means that um, developers, they should be able to add new features to our product by implementing extensions, right? Uh, you have seen before that there are all these panels I, I will be showing. There will be console panel, inspector panel, and network panel. And it should be possible for anyone to create a new panel, to create a whole new tool which is doing some exciting stuff. You know? This way, people can be really innovative. We can bring new features into our tools by just allowing people to create extensions. Um, and today's extensions uh, are very, very good. That's, they are much better than they were, they were before. And the reason why is that we support something like web extension APIs. Uh, and these APIs are running in every browser, or almost in every browser. So if somebody uh, creates an extension or develops an extension, that extension runs in Chrome, it runs in Firefox, it can run in Opera. And that's, that's great, you know? That's much better motivation for developers to write such, ex such extensions. They run in every browser, so that's why one API includes them all. You can extend any developer tools in any browser by writing just one extension. So that, that's really cool. Uh, and we have our own DevTools APIs. So you can use our APIs, for example, as I said, to create a new panel, and a whole new tool for React or Redux or any other library. If you prefer jQuery, you can create an extension which supports jQuery somehow. So that's, uh, that will allow us to, to build even better tools. People can contribute to our product by, by doing these extensions. Um, and as uh, the second, second point says, uh, some features can be maintained by the community. Uh, so we don't have to do everything. We already have you know, a good amount of work on our, on our plate. So it's great to just use the community to, to extend that product this way. Um, there is a demo showing WebSocket Monitor. I can quickly show it. Uh, let's see if that works. Oh yeah. So that last panel which I have here, that WebSockets panel, that's an example of an extension. That panel is not part of the default settings. It's not part of the default of these built-in tools. That's something which is added by an extension. So I can, I can select that panel. Um, and that test page I have opened uh, allows to create a WebSocket connection. So I don't have to drill into details. I can just socket. I can just connect to a socket. You can see there is a like log. There's a message showing that I really connected to a WebSocket. And I can send a message. See, a message. And it's there. And that WebSocket is echoing back, so that's why there are two rows. I send a message, that, that arrow is indicating that, and I also receive the same message back. And that's why the arrow is, direct, is, is pointing to the other direction. So that's a simple tool which allows to intercept WebSocket frames. If you're building applications which are using WebSockets, like simple chat applications for people, you can use that tool to debug the connection and see if there are any, if there are any troubles. If that tool doesn't work for you, you can see why. You can see exactly the data which are coming back and forth over the wire, right? Some pings happened. So again, it's displayed in the tool. And you can inspect, right? You can select a, a frame and see all the details, all the little data which are sent over the wire. So this is just an example of a tool, quite complex tool, which can be built, which is built as an extension. And people can be innovative and create much better tools much more tools for any existing technology on the web. So that's why we care about these APIs. So let me see if I can go back. All right. So next slide. Um, tests. So that's specific things for developers. So like, you know, building software is hard. Um, it's easily breakable. Like if you do something wrong, it doesn't work. And um, it's easy to implement new feature, like one or two. But it's a lot harder if you need to maintain like thousands of features, thousands of different functionality, and make sure that it all works, even if you know hundreds of people are changing the code base, right? So that's why we do tests. Every time the code base is changed, every time somebody is posting a patch, 
before that patch lands in that code base, before we change that source code, we run tests. And we are testing all the functionality, every feature, making sure that it's not, break, it's not broken by that new change, right? And writing these tests must be simple, it must be fun. We collected a lot of feedback about how relatively easy it is to implement new features, but how hard it is to implement a test for that new feature. So we decided to, again, change things here and use standard web technologies those technologies which are used, again, which are used by web developers, they already you know, know some, some, some ways how to write these tests. And if you want to use the same ways, exactly what they know, we want to use the same ways and write tests for us. So our users, these developers, they can use exactly the same knowledge to write tests for our product. So that's uh, what, the, what this slide says. Make tests fun, fun again. Tests are important. Um, so yeah, so that's a slide which is somehow summarizing so what, I, what I have said so far, the main message I want to send, um, the, the main aspect, or an important aspect. So that, that important aspect of our strategy is support for DevTools team members, as well as for external contributors, right? We, we consider the team being much better than just us, um, the core team. There are a lot of contributors around, so we want to support them and give them the same opportunities or technologies as we're using in the team. Now I want you to talk about new DevTools features. Uh, some of them are exciting, um, so let's see what was there. Um, so debugger. Um, debugger is for JavaScript developers, for those who write code. Um, and as I said at the beginning, we decided to use React and Redux because these are cool technologies and, and powerful. So the new debugger we have is built using React and Redux already. It's a fresh, new, brand new product. It's fresh, new UI, uh, it feels faster, it has, it has new functionality, and most of all, the code base is great. It's understandable, and it's a lot easier for people to understand the code and fix things, or implement new things, or implement new extensions, so that's important. The new debugger also works with Firefox. You can connect to Chrome, you can connect to Node.js, you can debug pretty much any JavaScript running today, so anywhere. Uh, and it's also true community, true community achievement. There are like hundreds of contributors contributing to that project. That project lives already on GitHub. Uh, there is great community of people sending these patches and PRs and helping us to build great product. Right? So that's, that's our debugger. You can quickly show that demo of how debugger looks like. See, that's one of the panels. I've been showing the inspector console, and there's also a debugger. That's for those who write, who, write, who are maintaining source code. So let, let me show you. There is some source, source code on the page. Um, this is a source code. This is a markup, and this, there is also some JavaScript. You can create a breakpoint. See, you can create a breakpoint on this line. Now, if I press that connect button again, I can hit that breakpoint. See, now it's hit. There is a breakpoint, I'm sitting at the breakpoint, meaning the execution has stopped. There is sitting there. I can inspect the environment, I can see all the variables, I can see values there in that panel. I can now inspect if everything is okay, if there are, if there are, if there are any problems, I can see them, I can visually, I can uh, literally see all these values I need to see and inspect all, of the, all, all, of, all, of, uh, all the structures which are available on the page. So that's the new user interface. So let me just resume that debugger and go back to my slides. So that was debugger. Inspector. So that one of the panels uh, I've been already showing you before, it's called Inspector, it's for inspecting the page. That's one of the most important or most used tools. And we are building new features for that inspector. As there are new CSS, you know, as, as the whole web is evolving, as new APIs are coming, as new CSS properties are implemented or supported by browsers, we are doing tools for them. And one of those new things was CSS Grid. So let me, let me show you an example again. I'm going to back to my page here. All right, so I need um, a different page. Let me open it here. Go back here. This is an example page which is showing 
a new thing, new, new thing in, in the web, which is called CSS Grid. So let me open that, these tools again. I'll focus the inspector panel. So that's the panel I've, I'll be showing you uh, a few times. It shows the markup, it shows every element which is on the page, and now I'm, I'm now interested in specific element, which is the unordered list, which is this, UL, UL the unordered list, which uh, is used to build that page. And this element is using specific CSS property, and that's called display, and the value is grid. As the new thing, it's been introduced last year uh, as a new CSS property, new feature for CSS, and we build a tool for it. So what you can do, you can click this little grid button and see the grid for yourself. This is the grid actually, which was not visible before. And you can, you can edit that in line. So let's see, I can change the value here, and you can see how the grid is shrinking or you know growing as I'm changing that value. Or I can create, I can change that gap, see? And that gap is now visually, it's nicely visually visible of what exactly is on the page. And that's, that's our goal. Every time there is something new, some kind of a new CSS feature, you want to build a tool for it. So you don't have to remember all these little nifty CSS properties. That tool is doing it for you. And you can see these changes for, for yourself on the page. So that's CSS Grid. So let me go back to my slides, if that's possible. I need to... <coughs> Oh, yeah, I understand. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not my slide, but I'll be. Okay, here. And yet, I'd like to get rid of this. My browser is running on my machine right now. Um, so yeah, apart from that inspector tool, that CSS grid support, there are also new performance tools. That's a whole new project we introduced last year, and that's focused on, as it says, performance. Of course, like we care about the web, and we want to, the web to be fast. So if you're building pages, if you're building complex pages, you want them to be fast, right? You want the script execution to be fast. And if they are slow, you want to know why. You want to somehow analyze the code, somehow run the page, and see like why the page is so slow. What is, what is slow on this page? That's why we build these performance tools. They are able to, you are able to use these tools to some kind of an audit and see exactly what on the page is slow. What piece, what, what is the line of source code which is slowing down the whole page, right? That's the core of of, that, of these tools, make pages fast or running fast, figure out what pieces are running slow or are ineffective and make them effective, right? And one special thing on these tools is that the performance tools are not only for web developers, they are good also for Firefox itself. They can measure the whole Firefox browser, they can analyze the whole Firefox execution and say why the Firefox itself as a browser is slow. So any engineer working for Mozilla can use these tools as well apart from web developers, so they are pretty powerful. Network monitor, so I was uh, already talking about network monitor a lot. That's the thing I was demoing before. It's possible to load that tool inside a page and then use our own tools to build our tools. If that makes sense. It's uh, tricky, but it's very, very powerful. So yeah, we are using React and Redux. We are able to load within that browser tab and do a lot faster development cycle. And yeah, and the team behind, Ricky, Fred, and Steve, I don't know if uh, Fred is here, but Ricky is over there, yeah. <laughs> ton of work, you know, ton of work on this tool, and, and it works great. And now, let's next. So, last few minutes, let me just 
mention a few features or a few things which we are want, which we want to support. So service worker, that's a thing, I don't know how well known that thing is, but today's applications are very, very complex on the web. People want to build more things. And service worker allows you to, to create a new thread, new thing, new execution environment on the page, which is doing heavy computation aside on the background. So if you have any heavy computation on your page, if you need to calculate anything which takes time, you can, you can create this new service worker thing, uh, run that calculation on the background, and you know, allow the user to continue the page. It doesn't slow down the page. It's running on the background. It doesn't slow down anything. The user can continue just you know, using the application and, and wait till it's done. So that's what service worker is all about. And our tools, of course, are supporting this new feature or should be supporting these new features. It's not yet, that's a future feature. You can create breakpoints, just as, 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 as I demoed before. You can watch the network traffic using network monitor. And of course, you can see exactly when the network monitor started and when the calculation is done, when it ended. So support for service work, that's definitely something we want to have. Responsive design, that sounds like a, a weird keyword, but it's for people who build pages for different different devices, not only for not only for desktop machines, but you want to run your pages, or you want people to be log to be able to run or load these pages on mobile devices, for example. And people have different different devices with different size screens, for example. So you want to have the pages designed properly, just right. So the layout is just right. No matter if the screen is big or small or have different kind of shape. So all needs to be allowed properly, you see. And these responsive design tools are allowing to do this, exactly uh, to, to set how big the screen is and then see the page, how it would look like if it was loaded on that device, right? So that's responsive design. And what we want to have in the future, we want to have these things like side by side. You can, you can see how the page would look like on a desktop machine, how it would look like on, on, a, on an iPhone, how it would look like on an iPad. And you could see it side by side at the same time and see that the layout is right. right? So that's what we want, make it easy to do these things. And inspector, I mentioned that CSS is great, but there is a lot more we can do. There is something called a box model with lots of properties it's around. And instead, again, instead of uh, remembering all these properties, we want to have tools which are helping people. Meaning, you don't have to remember those properties. The tools are visualizing everything. So in terms of this, this box model, you want to display the right things, the right numbers, exactly what you want to see on the screen at that time. So again, that's something we are preparing for the future. And Web Replay, that's a special thing. Uh, that's a brand new thing uh, for developers. So I mentioned quickly debugging, right? And I showed the breakpoint. I showed how the execution will stop at the breakpoint. And I showed, I don't, I don't know if I stepped, but you can step, you can you know, do that execution slowly. Usually if you execute a source code, it's quick. Right? It's just executed at once. If you are a developer, you can step through the source code. You can step over every line slowly and check that everything is all right, that every value is properly set. You can step forward, always forward. You step next to the next line and to the next line and then you know, to the next one. But this technology, as brand new technology, should be able to allow you to step actually back to the past. And that's exciting. Exciting for anyone who, who are actually missing this feature sometime. You can step back. That's something we want to support as well. And that's, that should be able to do using that WebRR thing, which records every, everything about the JavaScript execution and is allowing to debug to the past, not only to the future. And finally, last two slides. Uh, I mentioned that uh, already before. We want to ship feature fast. I said in days, right? As soon as we have DevTools as an add-on, we can ship in days. But actually, if we are able to load these tools in a page, as I did before with the network panel, we can, we can ship these tools as, as pages, as web applications, just over HTTP, just like any other page. So not in days, you can ship features immediately, right? It's over HTTP, just like any other page. That would be really cool. In that case, we can, we can open doors to 
a vast amount of possibilities. At that point, we could be an online service. We could be an online service which is able to connect to various backends and help debuggers, uh, help people to debug their applications. And that's it. That's shipping, fe shipping features or DevTools over HTTP bring us to a world which I call social debugging. Suddenly everything can be shared. As soon as we are online, as soon as we are on the web, we can share things. Any data I'm collecting about a page, for example, the network panel is collecting data, the timings, if you remember at the beginning, I mentioned the timings data, which are saying why page load is slow. You can share all this data with others. You can also archive all this data, and if you are trying to improve your page, if you are trying to make your page faster, you can then use this archive data and compare whether you are going in the right direction, right? You can share performance details. You can share even the debugger context. You could be sitting at a breakpoint and you could, you know, not know what to do next. You could share that whole context and ask anyone on, which is who is online, like, help me, help me. I'm sitting at a breakpoint. I don't know why the exception is happening now. Help me. If that context is shareable, somebody sitting on the other side of the world would help and say why why there is a problem in debugging the code. So that's social debugging. That could be a very nice. Uh, a very nice environment how to debug uh, web applications. And that's it. I believe this is my last slide, and I think now it's time for questions if there are any. Any questions related to DevTools or web uh, or anything I said? Okay? Uh, out of your, your uh, a little louder. How do you debug DevTools with DevTools? Right, how, how do I debug DevTools with DevTools? Um, let me show you, let me show you. I'm going to do a demo right now. So, here is the network panel, right? That's the, DevTools is now showing HTTP requests, which are related to this page. I, I'm having right now, right? But I can load that tool. I can load it inside a page as well. So I can, I can just, you know, Use the same tool to debug anything which is loaded in the page. Anything. So let me let me show you. Um, now I won't run in the. I won't run in. I was showing my demo in Chrome, but important was that that localhost, right? So let me load that tool inside Firefox as well. That's Launchpad. We have seen that already. That's Launchpad. Now I see like four pages, four pages. The launchpad itself. You know, it's, now I'm able to connect to any of any of these pages. That's how these tabs, like Google is first one, test page. See, these are the two. These are the four pages. And now I can pick the, for example, that test page. Right, and I'm there. I'm there. That's my test page. Now I click reload. I can reload, and you'll see that it test page will be actually reloaded. That button will change into an icon, rotating icon, right? So I, I'll click it. Oh, that, that other icon now, you know? And I'm, I'm just showing you all these, all these HTTP requests that has been executed by this page. That's the same tool. I just loaded that tool inside a page. That's it. That's just different environment. But what I can do now, I can open these built-in tools. Because this is just a page, right? So I will do it. So let's do it. Tools, developer, total tools. Right? And now I can debug this tool. So I can open uh, a debugger. And I can do whatever I want with that. You know, that's just debugger. And I can debug it, right? So this is the way how I can debug our tools using our tools. Right? That, that's the way. And, and Ricky deserves uh, also credits for this. That's a fresh new demo, by the way, which Ricky has been working on. So, so yeah. <laughs> so that's the answer to the question. Can we debug DevTools with DevTools and with DevTools? <laughs> <laughs> I never tried. <laughs> I believe yes. <laughs> uh, anything about Stuff because I, I've tried to develop in work of VR and I, I found it really hard to develop. If something's weird, I, I just don't know how to. Right, right. Where we are, um, we don't have any plans for that yet. Mm -hmm. 
but I know the team behind Web VR is, is doing great progress. So there will be tools, definitely. Uh, it just needs to be in the roadmap at some point. Yep. Any other questions? If I want to add a new panel to the dev tools, but I need some internal data from, from the Gecko engine, do I need to modify uh, the Gecko itself to open these APIs? Or right, right, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a great question. So, so today's world uh, of extensions is based on these web extensions, right? And web extension APIs. So extensions can do whatever they want, whatever these APIs are allowing to do. So if you want to do something new, you need these APIs. And if there are no APIs, you need to convince the add-on team to, to do that. Or you can, you, can, you can, there is a way how to implement a prototype of these APIs, then send the prototype to the add-on team and say, hey, I did these APIs. Here is a working prototype, it works. Now it's up to you whether those should be built in or not. So, so yeah, that's how it works. Um, and that's how we do it, by the way, as well, as a DevTools team. So any last question? What's the biggest benefit uh, of Firebox State for over Chrome State for? Um, good question. So, of course, like Chrome is uh, uh, a market leader at this point, and even DevTools in Chrome are, are great. Um, but we are not only trying to reach the party, we are not trying to catch them, like play the chase. Uh, we are trying to be unique in some features, uh, have something which is which they don't have. Um, so, so yeah, we are trying to have unique features, that's probably the answer. Uh, and right now, the performance tool could be one of the answer, because the performance tool is not only for web developers, but it's serving well even for Firefox developers, for whole Mozilla as an organization. Uh, so we can use our tools, and in the future that might, there might be more examples. In the future we could use our tools for even Firefox itself, because even Firefox needs to be uh, performant and fast. Uh, and let's see, in the future what it will, we have set of features which are not in Chrome, so there are reasons why uh, people could uh, choose Firefox DevTools or Chrome DevTools. And there are also different kinds of <coughs> integrations, like integrating our tools with other products. That's something which will, Chrome will probably never do. So we can use this as a uh, competitive advantage. So uh, we, we have dev uh, tools that are easy for the codes uh, in Firefox. So did we translate that protocol or did we just make another Yes, yes, yes. That protocol is called RDP, like Remote Debugging Protocol. We use that for uh, connecting to the backend, to even to remote devices. And definitely, we want to use that protocol. Uh, sorry, we want to create an adapter which allows to connect our tools to Chrome. Essentially, we want to support Chrome protocol. Uh, we want to speak Chrome protocol and connect to Chrome Dev Tools. So yes. You won't definitely want that. The advantage would be that you can use the same tool, so the same kind of UI, for, for testing applications on different browsers. Right? So that might be another way why our tools might be better than Chrome tools. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, questions, I can count it. Three, two, okay, one. Uh, does, does every feature in the old DevTools have been ported to the new DevTools? Um, we, 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 we doing it, yes, yes. Um, I cannot tell every feature. Like I know about some features in the debug room which were not ported, but these are definitely priorities, the, the parity from all versions of the tools. The, the matching the party is important. So in the network panel, for example, when we did, when we created a new version of the network panel, we kept every single feature in place. And every tool is trying to do it as well. Some features, uh, as I said, some features unfortunately need more time. So there are some exceptions, but very little. But since uh, 
the one in the police channel that's uh up to two is using the old dev tools and the, the new dev tool ship with with the version is not up to date. Right, that's true. Yes. Some 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 for example the console panel might be a good example. We created a new version of the console panel. But it's not done, it's not shipped to all channels. So you can try it in nightly, but not in release. And by the way, this is one of the top priorities we have in the team. Make sure that the new UI, the new version is actually shipped to all users. Uh, so yeah, some things just take take more time. So so Yes, our users receive a new update in the future or um, that's a good question. Um, probably not. ESR users need to wait for next ESR version. That's what I think. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's how it works. You, are, you, you stick in the in the past with something which is stable. That's why ESR exists, right? You are not updated unless there is new ESR. So of course, if you are on ESR, then you have all versions. I thought you. I thought it was the equivalent of uh, shipping that tools over to. Well, that's the future. That sounds from the future. Like keeping keeping the tools over HTTP, it will take time. You know, every single tool needs to be converted into HTTP. Into uh, that, there is a time we yeah yeah yeah. That's why it was the in future section. <laughs> All right. Sounds like uh, question. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. Uh, 现在还有加码，现在还有加码那个。